Hold it all together, everybody needs you strong. Well, hey guys, I'm Lynn Hansen, one of the pastors here at North Park Church. Glad to be sharing with you in our life groups this week. Uh, we're talking about grace and uh, specifically this week, what does God's grace do? And then we're talking about sanctification. Now, as we look at the prodigal son story, we see that it gives us a great picture of when and where sanctification begins. What is sanctification? Well, it, it literally means to be set apart for holy use. Uh, the items in the temple and so on were sanctified, set apart for holy use. It's, uh, but in a human being's life, uh, this side of Christ with the Holy Spirit in us, we being the temple of the living God, it's a progressive holiness. Sanctification then is a progressive holiness uh, and, and growing in purity that, that really lasts a lifetime. And so uh, once we're justified, we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're justified, we're declared righteous. From that point on, sanctification happens to the day we die and then we're glorified in Christ. So uh, sanctification takes the rest of your life and it's this process of becoming Christ-like. So as you look at the prodigal son story, I'll tell you the story. Listen very carefully to it. Afterwards, somebody will retell the story and then rebuild it uh, together and, and kind of add in what it is that they might have missed. But here's the story. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise, and I will go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose, and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, uh, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Okay, as I said earlier, uh, somebody retell that story as best you can from memory. It's the third week. Somebody should be able to do that pretty well. And, uh, but just have fun with it. Everybody else add in what it is that they might have missed afterwards, and we'll really get this story into our heart and our head, and we'll get back to some discussion questions in just a moment. All right, well, discussion questions. As we think about this subject of sanctification, justification happens when we put our faith in Jesus. God declares us right with Him, uh, righteous and right with Him. And uh, as we're declared right with Him, then from that point on, sanctification takes place where by God's grace, He literally makes us righteous. We, we become practically, uh, in a practical way, righteous in our lives. We grow in holiness uh, but, you know, a, as you grow and you look back, sometimes there's some embarrassment that takes place about where we used to be and the things we used to say. So question one, kind of a fun question to reflect on and think about. Have you ever suddenly become embarrassed or felt foolish when you remembered when you said or did something that now you look back and you see it really showed a great deal of immaturity? Okay, have a good time with that question. Go ahead.
Question number two, you know, what, what is, <clears throat> as you look at the story, what is the significance of the fact that the son was willing to be a servant, but the father instead brought him right back into the family, brought him into the family instead of allowing him to just be a servant? What's the significance of that? Talk that over, would you please? All right, now as we start to nail this down, think this through. Question number three, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and help you understand what God's Word has said about this. Now that the Son was in the Father's house, okay, He's come back, uh, He's been justified, He's been declared righteous, the Father's brought Him back into the family or into the family in the first place and, and not made Him a servant. Now that the Son is in the Father's house, how is He going to learn to live in relationship to the Father? How's that going to take place? Uh, and, and another way to word this question would be this. Now that he's justified, how would he be sanctified? How's that going to happen? All right, go ahead and uh, spend some time praying and talking about that. Well, question number four, uh, what has your process of sanctification looked like? All right, what has your process of sanctification looked like? It's an important question, uh, and uh, I, you know, it's worthy of praying and thinking about how that's all worked. Um, how are you learning to live in relationship to the Father? How is He making you holy? How is that working out? Uh, this might be a, a time for some prayer and some repentance in your group. So uh, as you reflect on that and you think about this is about you, not about somebody else in your group, or about you instructing them on how they should be sanctified, but instead, how's that process working with you? In what ways are you kind of blocking that process? Uh, how does uh, your your pride uh, keep that from taking place? And uh, what kinds of things are happening that are, that are really getting in the way of that? And what things are really, really, is God speaking to you about in your life? All right, go ahead and, and deal with that, please. Last question. Uh, this is our takeaway question. Uh, what, what is it that God wants you to walk away from your life group with tonight? What's the big idea? You know, there should be kind of a central theme that God is speaking to you about. Perhaps question four really dug that out a little bit. But uh, spend some time sharing with your group, being accountable about you. Uh, what is it that God wants to work with you on this week so you can kind of keep wrestling it out with them? Well, God bless you. Uh, you know, have the rest of a great life group. Have a, a wonderful week. Uh, just appreciate you so much, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.